All right, guys. Uh, Trump fake elector uh, has turned evidence on him uh, in Michigan, and I think it's absolutely damning it. And if you've never heard how Trump tried to overthrow democracy, this is an excellent explanation of it. So now, of course, we've got all the news for you guys uh, today on the Young Turks, Monday through Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, make sure you're watching the live show with Anna and I, uh, of course, on YouTube.com slash the Young Turks. And if you can be a member, uh, that would be great. It helps our honest reporting. We appreciate it. you could hit the join button below. Okay, now let me tell you about what happened. This is James Renner uh, in Michigan. He was one of the 16 fake electors that they have there. The fake electors were people who were supposed to meet and sign papers, which they did, saying that Donald Trump had won the election, even though he clearly had not, especially in Michigan, where he had lost by 150,000 votes and the election was already certified. In fact, this is critical, guys. In this report, you're going to see that uh, a Republican in Michigan refused to do this because she knew that this was illegal and that and she was an elector for Trump. Remember, both sides pick electors, and whichever side wins the state, their electors go to the Electoral College. She was one of Trump's electors and said, I will not sign this paper. I will not do this because we lost. This is illegal to do this. So there were people in the Republican Party who clearly knew what that that it was trying to basically do a, a, a coup and, and, and to overturn the results of the election. And that's why they refused to participate. The people that are being tried in three different states now are the ones that did participate in that uh, conspiracy, the forgery, uh, and, and, and basically the insurrection. Uh, the insurrection on the ground, I know it's a compelling video. But they were not going to hold the building. That was not how they were going to overthrow democracy. They were going to overthrow it through this method of using fake electors. So let me explain. Renner uh, was among, among the 16 that Michigan Attorney General uh, Dana Nessel um, uh, brought charges against. She did not bring charges against the lawyers yet or Donald Trump yet, which I think she absolutely positively should. I think that the a lot of the prosecutors, especially Merrick Garland at the federal level, have been totally derelict in their duty. They have been way too slow. They should have done this case the minute the election was over and Trump was out of office. Now in Michigan, they're doing pretrial hearings in February and they're going to vote in the primary in February 27th in Michigan. It's one of the early states. Uh, look, I, I appreciate that she brought up this case, but they have moved way, way too slow here. People have to understand the danger that we're in as Donald Trump has already once tried to make to end our democracy. All right, let me give you more details. Renner says, I can't overemphasize how once I read the information on the January 6th transcripts, how upset I was that the legitimate process had not been followed. I felt that I had been walked into a situation that I shouldn't have ever been involved in. And I'm going to give you more uh, quotes from him in a minute. Uh, and, uh, remember, uh, Arizona, New Mexico are also considering charges. Jesus, how long is it going to take you guys? There was a literal coup attempt up and at them. I, the way that everyone takes this so lightly drives me crazy. So, uh, Detroit news has already reported that Trump of course had called, uh, two members of the Wayne County board of canvassers, uh, to try to pressure them in December of 2020, not to certify the elections. So go outside of the regular process. Do not put in the electors that actually should go to the Electoral College. Do not certify the results. Guys, if you're a Republican or MAGA out there, I need you to understand that there is a way to challenge an election. It doesn't mean you shouldn't challenge an election. It doesn't mean you shouldn't audit the vote. You shouldn't do any of those things or do a recount. You're perfectly within your rights to ask for all of those things. This is beyond that. This is saying, we know we lost, but we don't care. When we go to they, when they go to court, they not only did they lose, as you're going to see in the story, they knew they were going to lose. So this is extrajudicial. This is okay. The legal process is not going to vindicate us. We lost the election. I don't care. I want power. Let's ruin democracy. So, by the way, Renner is a former state trooper, a retired businessman, a lifelong Republican, worked a volunteer for the Republican Party in his county. Uh, etc. So upstanding citizen, upstanding Republican, etc. Now, um, to give you a sense of uh, why I'm saying they knew, Laura Cox, the former chairwoman of the state Republican Party in Michigan, I'm now quoting the New York Times, 
uh, testified uh, that she and other local party officials had drafted language for the electors to sign that made clear they were only acting on a contingency basis in the event that Trump's campaign election litigation succeeded. Now, that at that point is legitimate. That's okay to say, hey, you know what? Trump already has his electors, as they do in each state. And if we win the litigation, then those electors are going to go instead. Nothing wrong with that, right? But she had COVID and didn't go on December 14th. The Trump campaign took out her language about how it's only on a contingency basis. Instead, here, I'll give you the quote. She said the Trump campaign went against her instructions by not including such language. On purpose, they took out the contingency part and said, no, 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 This isn't if we win the litigation. Why? Because they knew they weren't going to win the litigation. They didn't have any evidence, let alone evidence to overturn a result by 150,000 votes. They didn't have close to that evidence. So Trump's lawyers took out the part from, a, from another Republican in Michigan saying, hey, remember, this is only a contingency basis. They erased that. I was like, yeah, yeah, under any circumstances, we're going to send these electors. And so now, Terry Lynn Land, a former Michigan Secretary of State, was originally designated as a 2020 Republican elector. So she's one of the legitimate electors. So they say to her, hey, you're a former Secretary of State, again, uh, you know, deep Republican. So why don't you come to this December 14th thing and be one of these electors? She's like, no, I'm not going to do that. That's not legitimate. The, this election has already been certified. There's no evidence. There's no way we're going to win in any litigation. Besides which, you're not even at this point saying it's on a contingency basis. You're just saying that these are fake electors. No, I'm not going to be involved in that. See, because she knew, unlike Renner, she knew the law. So she knew they were trying to cheat. And she knew they were. I, now, look, I'm telling you what was in the paper. And now my analysis of that is it appears that she did not participate because she knew that they were trying to erase the actual legitimate elections of our democracy. What kind of people do that? Well, the Trump team does it because they never believed in democracy. They just believe in raw power. And if it meant that Trump was going to stay in office, they didn't give a damn that it was a coup attempt and that they were going to destroy our democracy. They'll do it again. They'll do it again. So these guys have no checks on them. So, and next time around, they're going to have even less checks. So back to Renner, he said, I knew nothing about the electoral process. I was accepting the individuals that were in authority knew what they were talking about. Guys, I'm not here to say, oh, look, the other electors that are being prosecuted in Michigan and Georgia and all the other states that I mentioned, like, oh, they're the world's worst people. They're evil people, et cetera. A lot of them, I suspect, are like Renner. They had no idea that they were fake electors. And so a bunch of Trump lawyers come in and go, oh, yeah, 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 sign the paperwork if you like Trump. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we won the election. Sure, you're the real elector. Sure, sure, sure. Sign the papers. Now, they shouldn't have. They shouldn't have known better. It's a legal document. They committed a crime there, right? So I'm not excusing their actions, but I bet a lot of them had no idea. And I bet you to this day, tons of them still think that Trump won the election. If you're MAGA, you've got to understand the rest of us, all of society, all of the world thinks and knows. I'm sorry, but that you guys are totally detached from reality. In the real world, the Trump team went to court over 60 times. They lost every single case and never presented one piece of evidence. The facts are overwhelming. Trump definitely lost, and then he definitely cheated to try to overthrow the results of the election. I know you don't believe it. I know you'll never believe it, but... I'm here to tell you, whether you hate me or not for it, you're in a cult. And in cults, reality gets warped. And don't get me wrong, Democrats have their own cults. They they think that their, their leader is going to win when he's incredibly unpopular. They think that that the, the corrupt politicians are, are God's gift to humanity. Some, not all of them, not most of them, but a lot of them think that way. Certainly they do in Washington. And they think, oh, no, no, campaign contributions. That's not corruption. Millions of dollars to a politician. It's just them talking. So they have their own cult. And they're detached from reality in a different way. But in this case, democracy is actually on the line. So for God's sake, snap out of it. Pick another Republican. Anyone could beat Biden. Biden is so weak. You could pick a local Republican dog catcher and beat him. You don't have to pick a guy who hates our democracy, who believes in a dictatorship. So, all right, last parts here. 
Brenner also said, it was only then that I realized that, hold it, there's an official state authorized process for this. I had never been an elector. I had never discussed it with anybody. I was used to a much more info, informal process at the county level. And so then when I became suspicious, that's when I became suspicious of what had gone on. And quote, what happened was not legitimate. He went on to say, I am very upset. Betrayed is an understatement. That's all I can say. Look, that's the thing about Trump. He doesn't just betray democracy or government, but most of all, he betrays the people who trust him the most. So if you donate to his campaign, he reroutes it to rent for Mar-a-Lago or Trump Tower, et cetera. You give to his charity, he reroutes it for his own purposes to pay his legal bills, to buy picture paintings of himself. You go to his university, he doesn't teach you anything about real estate. It's a fraud. He then paid a $25 million fine and admitted it was a fraud. The people he rips off the most are the ones that trust them the most. Those are not Democrats. Those are Republicans. And in this case, he got a whole bunch of Republicans across the country to commit very serious crimes. And then, of course, he slithered away afterwards. And he's been saying ever since because he knows the power of marketing and he knows the power of propaganda. He just repeats that lie 2,000 times maniacally. Every piece of evidence in every court system has said there was no fraud. It didn't, it wouldn't, it nothing, it would not have affected the election in any way, shape, or form that these votes are real, that this is certified. There was none of the fraud that these lunatic right wing media and lunatic Trump is talking about. They don't care about our democracy, they don't care about this country. All they care about is power. We have got to stop Trump. And, and I, I'm happy that the prosecutors like Nestle have taken on this case because it's not just about Trump and it's definitely not about this election. It's about maintaining our system of law, our democracy, period. If you don't punish the people who try to coup, you're going to get another one and another one and another one. It's a giant green light. I cannot begin to tell you how disgusted I am with Merrick Garland, that pathetic weakling that sat around for two and a half years and didn't do anything about this. And so now when now they're in the middle of an election and he's leading, the Democrats stink of weakness. I can't stand how weak they are. And the Republicans come around going, okay, if you're going to let us take the country, even though we can't win elections, we'll just steal it from you. These are fake electors, coup attempt. For God's sake, we've got to put an end to this. These guys have to go to uh, prison. The ones that uh, are are, uh, are not cooperating with prosecutors that are actually guilty. But most importantly, it isn't about these small fry guys, half of whom didn't even know. It's about the guys at the top. They always punish the January 6th guys that broke into the building. They punish the weirdo shaman. They punish these electors. But they've never gotten to Trump and Giuliani, et cetera. For God's sake, punish the people in power. The only reason why the Democrats didn't act for two and a half years is because Trump was one of the elites. And they, this corrupt Democratic system that we have now, I don't mean a small d Democrat, I mean the Democratic Party. They are built on protecting the elites and the powerful. So I'm not one of these people who uh, on mainstream media was like, oh, the Democrats are angels and the Republicans are, uh, you know, troglodytes, et cetera. No, but in this case, there is overwhelming evidence that they try to ruin our democracy. And, I'm, and I can't stand that the Democrats barely figured out that they're supposed to do something about it two and a half years later. And now I'm worried to death that it might be too late and this monster might get back into office and we might lose the whole country. But that's where we are today. But I appreciate that Renner told the truth. And I hope that that case comes to fruition. And for God's sake, I most importantly, independence, but maybe even a couple of MAGA guys. Can you just watch some of these trials? Can you read the articles? Can you look at the actual evidence and make up your own mind even, instead of lending your mind to Donald Trump? who only cares about himself, who's looking to rip you off, whether it's the money or the votes or anything else that helps support him. So God help America, because we're in a bad, bad state now with Trump leading the, uh, uh, you know, in this election when he has no respect for this country, no respect for our democracy and would undermine it and overthrow the democracy in a second if he could. Why? Because he already tried he already tried 
it's crystal clear. 